Today we have a 100% stock Montero 2.5 DGT which we're gonna do just ECU reflash on this one and see how much power we get. And along with that, we're gonna be discussing a few questions and mostly misconceptions when it comes to tuning diesels, which we actually have heard a lot about. So in this video, I will address all of that with some about three to four of the most commonly asked questions when it comes to tuning diesels and just to clear up the misconceptions that have been floating out there, which quite frankly are a lot. Alright, these are the top five questions that we often get here in the shop when people come and ask when they're inquiring about remap is, well, number one, do I need to install intake and exhaust before getting a remap? What about if my engine is just stuck? Is it okay? Will it be smoky or mausok? And actually, this I think should be number one. What about fuel consumption? And number five, what about the throttle controller that I already have installed? What's gonna happen to it? So we'll tackle it one by one. Do I need to install an intake exhaust before I do remap? No. There's your answer. <laughs> you don't absolutely need to change your intake and exhaust to get power from a remap. You can remap a completely stock vehicle which takes us to question number two. And you will still gain pretty good power. But if you do have an intake and exhaust, you will get more power as compared to when you simply remap stock. Let's take for example, Montero 1, Montero 2. This one stock. This one has intake and exhaust. So let's say stock, we have 150 horse. With intake and exhaust, we're at around 162 horse. When we remap both, this will reach around 210. This one, with everything being the same, all the settings, this one will be around 225, maybe 230. So yes, there is a difference if you remap between stock and if you have mods like intake and exhaust. You will get more horsepower and you will maximize it more if you change this one. It does make philosophy. What if intake lang? Yes, it will still be better than stock. What if exhaust lang? Yes, it will still be better than stock. It will still be gain. Uh, more philosophy. What if exhaust and KNN and drop in? Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Do I need to change to an intake? No, you don't. But if you want to, I'll be happy to take your money. So that's actually question number one and two. To repeat, you can have it remapped stock, but mas malakas if you get intake and exhaust. You get more horsepower for the remap if it's modified. But if you're happy with stock because you don't want any additional noise, you don't want any additional expenses, you just want something else better, then no problem. Yeah, ito lagi. This is a question and a misconception at the same time. So let's answer the question part first. No, hindi siya magiging mausok when you have it remap. The misconception part comes with, well, it's also partly because of the fault of other tuners out there who like to tune it very, very smoky because of this. You will gain power with a remap even if it's not smoky up to a certain level. Oh, let's take our Montero example. We know that an additional 60 to 65 horses more will still not be smoky minimal or very very minimal smoke and that smoke will only happen at 100% tapak or throttle and at 3.5 rpm anytime it's not this actually anytime these two conditions are not met hindi siya mausok so if you're only cruising at 1518 2000 rpm and 30% tapak hindi siya mausok so no it will not be smoky smoke only comes out when you are at 100% throttle which brings us to some cars when you want to go above this one higher than 65 horses then it will have to be smoky because we have to inject a lot more fuel into it so dito dito yung So that's it. No smoke.
this refers to 100% throttle. Now, you, I'm sure you've seen also some cars that yung pagka start pa na, pagka start, mausok na agad. That is wrong. You're not, it, tuning is not supposed to work that way. Uh, as much as possible, we do not actually mess with the idle of the car. There is absolutely no tuning done at that part. So, it should drive pretty much like stock. Yung mga cars na nakita mo na pagka start, mausok pa lang, may ginagawa yung tuner dun na pagka start pa lang, buhos ka agad ng crudo. Uh, that's wrong. Most people don't want that actually. <laughs> Most of you have this one because you get suckered by the Facebook ad. Tanga ka, bumili ka niyan eh. <laughs> it's all over Facebook now. Lana, top speed auto controller. They send these things all over the Philippines. And you bought one because hey, you're an idiot. You got suckered by it. But it works. It does what it says. It makes the throttle faster. Nothing more, nothing less. What they don't tell you is, if you install this one, your fuel consumption goes down. <laughs> because with every big throttle adjustment or big throttle opening, ECU will have to throw in more fuel at that particular point and a lot of that fuel just goes out the tambucho that's not being burned. Hence, fuel economy goes down. So what do you do with your throttle controller once you do decide to get remap? Benta mo na ang bawi sa remap and just charge it to experience and not to get easily swayed by Facebook marketing ads. You can sell it to a friend too. Now, fuel consumption. This is uh, another important question that everybody keeps thinking because I don't blame them. That's number one. In most of my videos, I keep saying that for the diesel engine, you add fuel, you add air, power goes up. It's a little bit counterintuitive. Lumalakas na nga, nagdadagdag ka ng crudo. Paano nagbabawas yung konsumo? It's a bit hard to wrap your head around. You're adding more fuel, but at the same time, it will save fuel. This is why it happens when you do save fuel. And on the average, we get anywhere from 8 to 10% better. Mileage. The easiest way to explain it that I found is this one. Before, let's say you step on the throttle 20% to get 50 horses. Let's say 2,000 RPM. After remapping, your throttle application actually goes down. This might only be 14%, maybe 15% to get the same 50 horses and at an even lower RPM. This is why tumitipid, because you step on the pedal less. And the biggest factor for fuel economy is still your right foot pressing on the pedal. Less pedal means less consumption. So that's why on the average it's 8 to 10% in city driving. And on highway driving, uh, we'll show, we'll attach a few Testimonials that we had on our Facebook page on how much better their mileage is. Feel free to read it afterwards. Okay, we're done with our Montero remap and then this is a bit surprising. In stock form, it only makes 123 horses, which is absurdly low for a VGT equipped Montero. Uh, normally, these things we should see about 145, 150. Mm, surprising, but not quite surprising because we've seen this type of abnormality before in Mitsubishis. Don't ask me why it's like that, but it's, I can tell you why the power is low but I can't tell you why it was like that from the factory so anyway this is our first tune here this green line this one is not exactly minimal smoke but borderline smoky then we see how much more we can take it so this blue line is our next tune because we want to try to make around 200 
This is a pretty smoky tune already, which the owner doesn't want. So we're gonna bring it back down to this green one. The reason why it smokes is this. This is stock air fuel ratio right here. Uh, it's 20 is to 8, but that's just the maximum our dyno can read. It could possibly be 22 or 21 air fuel ratio. Then this is our initial tune, the green one here. So this is still not smoky because the how do we determine if it's smoky or not if it crosses this 14.5 line as the air fuel ratio gets near here or goes down like our next tune see how the blue line dips goes down goes straight and goes down this one mauso ito hindi and as for why this car is kind of bad to begin with or low power it's because the boost is low <laughs> It starts off absurdly low at only 6 PSI, then ramps up to 18. Uh, that's low. So what we did was we increased the boost here at the very bottom. So from 6 PSI, we jump it all the way up to 22 on the get-go. So that's why our maximum gain is actually this one. From 40 horse to 155 horse. That's 115 horses right then and there. <laughs> And torque also, we jump it from 150 at 2,000 RPM to 475 <laughs> at a very low 21 and 2250 RPM. So once again, with our five questions and misconceptions, most of these things, actually, if you go to some guy who remaps without a dyno, they won't be able to tell you any of this. None. And this is why also you need a dyno because we need numbers, we need baseline, we need a point of reference on where to adjust and to see if the adjustments that we did are getting you more power, getting you less power, and if it's up to what is already tama or sagad pa ng konte or bawas ng konte. You won't be able to tell that just by driving it on the road. <laughs>